the first time I laid eyes on that town, it confirmed everything I ever believed about New Tejas, principle of which was that I never wished to visit New Tejas. Nonetheless, having been notified that my only sister had passed, leaving behind a fully stocked apothecary shop, and that the town had decided it should go to her only living adult relative, I had little choice but to make the journey and see what my sister had left behind. Upon my arrival, the first person I met was the town's doctor, who explained to me that it was not only a shop my sister had left behind, but also a young daughter. Uh, you can imagine my surprise, knowing my sister had never been married, finding out that I now had an illegitimate niece who was presumably now in my charge. What made matters worse was that the doctor explained to me that this girl, my niece, was suffering from a terrible ailment that caused her constant insufferable agony. The doctor explained that the only way he had found to alleviate my niece's agony was to keep her sedated on the most powerful narcotics. And as the doctor explained to me, he had recently made a large purchase of such narcotics from my sister before her untimely demise. Otherwise, presumably, the ruffians that had killed her would have taken them as well. So now it became clear to me why the inhabitants of so crude a settlement would have bothered to find the rightful heir to something as valuable as an apothecary shop and why the letter had referred to me as my sister's closest living adult relative. It wasn't the shop they were trying to force off. It was this cursed little girl with her accursed suffering. But being as I am a good-hearted gentleman, I did take possession of that apothecary shop and the doctor brought over my niece for me to see for the first time. I do declare it was a shock to my system to see that purple hair, those strange yellow eyes, and her distorted legs where her ankles rose up from the balls of her feet as if to form extensions of the leg itself like the legs of some sort of cat-like beast. And what made the horror so profound was the realization that my family of uh, pure blood sisters that had resisted any form of mutation for generations had now been corrupted by this distorted little creature. And just as the doctor had advised, no sooner did the narcotic effect wear off than this terrible little thing started screaming at the top of her lungs as if someone had lit her entire body on fire. I immediately injected another dose of the narcotics. But a few hours later, when the effects of this most recent dose also wore off and that girl began screaming again, I realized that caring for this unwanted little ward was going to be an expensive proposition. And so at that point, I realized that I was perhaps the only person with sufficient will not to cater to this affliction, and I determined I would find a way to help my niece overcome her suffering. And so the next time the narcotics wore off and the screaming began, I turned a deaf ear to the sound. And my niece started to become wild, like some sort of ravenous beast, clawing at the furniture and tearing at me trying to get to that shelf where the narcotics were kept. But I stood strong 
staring into that girl's wild yellow eyes, unflinching and unwavering until she had finally worn herself completely out and dropped to the ground out of exhaustion. There she lay no longer screaming but rather whimpering and I looked down at her and said, I'll give you what you want, but you'll have to be silent for five minutes. Well, she whimpered and whimpered and whimpered, but she could see I was unmovable. And so finally, she became silent. And I watched as the seconds ticked off on my clock And at five minutes exactly, I administered a dose of narcotics. The next time, I increased my demand to 10 minutes of silence, then 20 minutes, then an hour of silence. Eventually, I got to the point where I didn't even have to wait for her to become exhausted. Simply lay out my demand and she would swallow her pain long enough to receive her coveted relief. And despite the offensive nature of this mutant creature, I found she was not entirely without her uses. She had actually inherited some of her mother's aptitude for chemistry, and I was able to instruct her in the preparations of various basic chemical compounds to help support the revenue of the shop. In addition to supplying her own accursed needs, of course she was nearly useless when she was trying to fight her pain, constantly shaking and jittering like some sort of rabid animal. But eventually I got her to the point where she could endure the pain for almost a full day at a time. And during those periods where she was able to function properly, she would create more than enough chemicals to satisfy her own needs and also the needs of the shop. And so with this sort of uneasy understanding, we fell into a routine and the years passed. I won't say I was ever happy about the situation, but I had certainly found a way to turn this misfortune to my economic advantage. And then one day, as if to evidence the ungratefulness that is inherent in mutant blood, she just up and disappeared, taking an expensive chemistry set with her. Folks say she run off with a band of ruffians, not much different than those that had killed her own mother. And that is the gratitude I received for the years I dedicated to her well-being. And so, it would appear there is no hope for this child. She is wild, wilder than the wind.